Rebuilding America, President Biden unveils a new ambitious proposal to fix aging infrastructure and create thousands of jobs, but he's already getting pushed back over how to pay for it. And today, a star witness is expected to take the stand in the Derek Chauvin trial. The Minneapolis police chief is expected to answer the question, did Derek Chauvin use excessive force when his knee was on George Floyd's neck? And we bring in political insider Armstrong Williams now to discuss Good morning, Armstrong. Let's start in Minneapolis. Heartbreaking testimony this week in the Derek Chauvin trial. Prosecutors, they have shown really graphic cell phone video of the final moments of George Floyd's life. We've heard from witnesses, some of them breaking down on the stand, saying they felt helpless to help Floyd. And we've heard from first responders, you know, firefighters and ambulance drivers. They arrived on the scene only to find him unresponsive. And from his girlfriend yesterday, saying they both had struggled with opioid addiction. So as the prosecution wraps up week one in this trial, what are your thoughts as you have been watching this case unfold? You know, I think the, the most insightful is listening to Chauvin's own colleagues in law enforcement and all made it very clear that his resting his knee on this human being's neck for almost nine minutes when even the the Respondent says she thought the video had stopped. There was a delay in the video. She did not realize that he still had the foot on the neck. And even for people who want to believe because of um, George Floyd's past transgressions with drugs and with the law and with crime, and the uh, it is clear from the autopsy report that none of that contributed to his death. It was the pressure on his neck. And also martial arts experts saying the same. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that Derek Chauvin should be punished. And it's just so sad to listen to this. And I think the reason why it's so emotional for people, because some people say, yet yeah, go by the grace of God, that could also be mean. To think that somebody could be so cold and so dead, to have no heart and no soul, that you could actually be a part of something like that. It's just so humane. And that's what's sad about it, because it reminds America just how far we have to go, especially when you think about the meaning of Resurrection Weekend and renewal and healing. And this country is trying to heal. And, and, and Americans, especially who are black, don't want to believe that what they're witnessing in Minneapolis this week could possibly happen to them, especially in 2021. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about uh, President Biden's $2 trillion plan to rebuild America's roads and bridges, the electrical grid, broadband, and so much more. Yesterday, he tasked his five cabinet secretaries to go out there and sell his new plan. He's calling for tax hikes on corporations and people who make more than $400,000 a year. And we're already seeing pushback, even from some Democrats. Is this dead on arrival when it hits Congress? You know... Melanie, the last bill was about fighting a disease. There were a lot of emotions pent up about it. In this bill, there are no emotions. Um, uh, when you talk about raising corporate tax rates, it's going to be very difficult to find 10 Republicans to cross over. And as much as you may talk about budget reconciliation, which you must get approved, you're right, Democrats, progressives from the left, they're pushing back. Because look, tax increases tend to hinder the U.S. economic recovery. Even McConnell spoke out yesterday that you got no votes on the COVID bill and you can expect no support on this. I mean, you have this Green New Deal. You have all these other things that's going on in this bill. And listen, Melanie, you and I know from traveling the highways and byways and flying and airports um, that our bridges, our roads, our airports are in desperate need of renovation. But there's less in this bill has, that has to do with this than anything else. And if you're going to do this, do it because it's something that absolutely needed to be done a year or two years ago. Big government is back. This is what this is about. Um, Biden has not seen himself in the spirit of an FDR and an LBJ. And how will it be paid for? Who's going to pay for this? Raising taxes? You think the, the wealthy are the only ones that's going to pay for this? Middle class Americans. Every American will be scraped to pay for this. And government can never fix the economy. It is something that has to be done with the private sector. But I will give the president credit for this. He did leave a window open, along with his press secretary yesterday, that he would love to have and would welcome bipartisan support on this bill, which means he left the window open to go back to Republicans to negotiate to find at least 10 or 15 Republicans where they can compromise. Maybe the tax rate is not from 21 to 20 percent, but less than that, to find a way to compromise, at least get the most important part of the bill passed, which is to finally address 
the infrastructure of nightmare that our country is facing. All right, Armstrong Williams, thanks so much for uh, your thoughts today. You can watch the Armstrong Williams Show every Saturday morning at 10.30 here on WJLA 24-7 News.